All right, got something a little different today. You guys remember this uh, DC generator that, that was given to us and uh, we cleaned up and got it running again. We got uh, a little dirt bike with us here today and uh, Mike. How you doing? And uh, one of my subscribers, actually one of our subscribers, Mike, he subscribed to you too. Huh. Keith, uh, I think it's Keith Nunya or Nonia. I'm probably butchering his last name, but that's uh, the nature of the beast here. But anyway, he asked, uh, what good is a, a DC generator? He didn't even know they made them. Hmm. And uh, I asked Mike to, to answer that question because uh, he's, he's the expert on these things, you know. I, don't, I, don't, I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> so so uh, let us know, Mike. Let us know why. why uh, I always thought it was because they were safer, you know, like they uh, wouldn't electrocute you and stuff like that. But okay. when I was speaking to you earlier, you, you let me know that's not the case. Because well. I remember Edison and Tesla having that, that uh, discussion. Yeah, yeah, that was, well. <laughs> if you want to call it that. that. That whole thing back in the current wars, they called that, that was all pub a publicity stunt, you know. Right. It, it, it turns out that uh, DC, when you're dealing with line voltages like this, this is 110 or 115 volts, I think it's rated. Yeah, so, you know, when you get up to that point, DC is actually more dangerous because um, it's the kind of, the situation is when you get electrocuted or when you touch a live DC conductor, it, 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 the, the saying is that it doesn't let go. DC doesn't let go because mm -hmm. unlike AC, DC current is always flowing in one direction. And once you get hit, it'll lock your muscles up and it'll hold you there on whatever live pot you're touching. Whereas AC, since AC power is not always on, you can think of it like that, it's constantly turning on and off flowing in different directions. So you have the, they call it the, it's called the zero crossing when the AC power is actually nil. There's no potential difference. And that's kind of the, 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 the chance your muscles get to release and move to allow you to either pull away from the conductor mm -hmm. or you know, it'll just blow you off. See, now I, I always thought it was the opposite because I know a guy that was a, a high voltage lineman mm -hmm. and I always thought that like high voltage would grab you and wouldn't let you go. But I, I had no idea about DC. Well, when you get you, when you get to line voltage, you know what you know what what's serving your residence here. Like that that line there is either a 13.2 or a 33 kV. That'll just blow you up. You know, it doesn't right. matter if that's AC or DC. It'll just fry you. you right. Know, it, whatever part is con of you is contacting that wire is just going to be vaporized. Mm -hmm. There's so much energy, so much heat energy uh, there that you don't even. There's, <laughs> It doesn't matter if it's uh, AC or DC, it's just going to blow you off. It's funny you said vaporize so, because yeah. he did he did contact the high voltage line and it burned his two fingers off. Yeah, yeah, it, they, they will just Completely disappear. gone. Yep, exactly. So anyway, I don't mean to interrupt you, I just, you know, I'm, th I'm thinking like the average person out there. Well, you know, this thing, one, DC generators tend to be a bit smaller, especially ones from this era. See, the AC version of this generator would actually be a bit heavier, a bit larger, a bit longer, and it would be more expensive to produce, for one thing, because in it, for an AC generator of this style to operate, it has to have a DC generator also to make its field power. So really what you'll end up with is a, a DC generator to make field voltage, and then that field voltage being fed into the um, field coils, and then the field coils induce a voltage in the rotor, and then that gets your AC out. So you end up really with two generators in one when you have an AC generator. When in, all, in, in a lot of situations, it not, it's not necessary. Like back when this was built in the 50s or whenever, I forget exactly when it was built, um, you know, you're, you weren't running, the, the kinds of things you'd use this for in the field would primarily be simple hand tools, you know, handheld drill or grinder or saw uh, or lighting. That's, that's all you had back then. Right. You know, and, and this was from a fire company, and, was and it? it was probably meant for a blower. Maybe could you do that? Uh, depending on what kind of motor uh, the the blower had, you okay, see, it, it 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 varies a lot. So induction motors, straight induction motors, won't work on DC power. You have to use what's called a universal motor, which, uh, forgive me, I don't know the exact terminology for electric motors, but um, because the the, the, the DC current is constant. There's no there's no switching. There's no potential. I don't want to say potential difference, but eh, it's kind of hard to describe. But a straight induction motor won't work on DC power. You'll just burn it up. 
you need a, a brushed motor, a universal motor, something where you've got a wound rotor and a wound, uh, wound stator. Uh oh. The president? Oh, it is. I gotta take this phone call. Right. Sorry. Let me shut this down. All right, yeah, sorry about that, but that was that was business there, and yeah, uh, you gotta, gotta take care of that. So, uh, <laughs> all right, I but, think you were, you were explaining that bike, uh, uh, Mike, but uh, show show them exactly uh, what you can use on there. Oh, okay. Well, we have uh, w what is called a, a universal motor right here, actually. So this is a, a little brushed motor on a uh, four and a half inch angle grinder, and it specifically states right on the label. AC or DC power. Can you see that? Yeah, yeah, we got a reflection. Yeah. Right there, okay. All right, so so you know that just by looking at that, that, that one will work. Yeah, a lot of, you know, a lot of older tools like this are labeled AC. That is old, that's, that's about 1980. Right, yeah, and then even back further. And, and, and of course, just incandescent lights, any incandescent light, right? Yeah, any incandescent light will, will be fine on on uh, on DC power. You know, you, you, can't, you can't plug a fluorescent lamp into it. You might be able to use some modern LED bulbs, but you know, don't uh, don't take my word on it. Investigate that for yourself. It all right. depends on how the circuit circuitry is set right. up. Something like that might even say around right a box, but it, it may. Yeah. yeah. But, okay. Uh, what do you say? Uh, let's start up and uh, show them how, how the tools are running. That's it. Okay. Are you ready to go, buddy? Yeah. Yeah. yeah the fuel's on. Right? I turned that on. It's been a while since it started, so. Ah. Let's try it again. Chokes on, right? I don't think so. No. There you go. Oh no. Oh, uh, you know what? what? I don't know if it has fuel in it. Let me go see. Let me check if it has fuel. <laughs> All right. So we're gonna we're gonna check. We're gonna start this thing up and then we'll turn this back on. All right. Yeah. Sorry about that. That was my fault. You know, I don't know if you guys remember, but this had a, a gas leak, a tiny little gas leak in the petcock, and I never fixed that. So it actually. It ran out of gas completely. I thought it was full. Thought I had fuel on it. I know. <laughs> oh well. All right, Mike has it running now, and uh, he got, he's got the grinder plugged in. And I'll get over here, maybe you can see the the actuator. Plug the light in, might put a real load on it. That's only a 100 watt bulb, but. Alright, we got the light on and the. I don't know, let's let me push it. Let's see. There we go. Hey, that's it. The little engine that could. All right, well, there you go. All right, buddy, shut it down. All right, like I say, sorry about the, the fuel issue, but I got to take blame for that. Yeah, we got to clean that uh, pet cock up there. Yeah, I meant, I meant to do that. You know, I just uh, got busy, buddy. Too got many busy. Projects. Yeah. All right, so uh, yeah. that's, that's just more. I just wanted to give an explanation for... Uh, Keith, you know, because he had asked, and I'm sure a couple other guys wanted to know. So. Yeah, I don't know if we missed anything, but yeah, it's it comes down to cost savings, really. Right. And, you know, it, not 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 everything needed AC power back then, so mm -hmm. it was acceptable to have a DC generator, something we're going to carry around, you know, in the field. Right. So it has its limitations, but then it also has its advantages. Yep. So you, you got to know what you need, and that's that's what they needed. So. All right, what do you say? Enough of this, buddy? Yep, enough of this. All right, thanks for uh, giving us an explanation, something that I was unable to do. I hope that answers your question here, Keith, and uh, a couple of your other guys. So what do you say, buddy? Enough of this. All right, see you guys later.